Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 19th, and it's shaping up to be a beautiful fall day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Below freezing when I got up this morning, but it's going to get up to 55 and be sunny. So, good, good day. Good day to rake leaves, I suppose. But we shall see what the day holds. Uh, I'm on vacation. I, uh, I start, well, start vacation tomorrow, I guess, technically. But, yeah, I took the week of Thanksgiving off. Uh, actually, in Monday as well, so I won't go back to work until next Tuesday. Got a lot of vacation time I'm trying to use up before the end of the year. So, that's, that's good. Uh, me and the wife have some, some thoughts about some fun stuff to do, and uh, mostly just going to be catching up on things here and doing the kind of things I normally do. But, yes, Thanksgiving. Uh, well, we'll talk more about that. Uh, I wanted to let you know, well, first off, it's good to be back because I wasn't here last week. I was instead in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., uh, enjoying uh, the Society for Neuroscience Conference. Just showing off a bit, name dropping. Uh, that was a great conference. Huge. Huge. It's, uh, I believe it was close to 30,000 attendees. Uh, just ridiculously large and... Uh, you can't see everything. You can't even see everything that you'd like to see. Uh, you certainly, nobody could see everything. It's just too big. But um, to see everything you'd like to see is hard just because of the, the, the size of the thing. It's a huge convention center. It could take you, uh, oh, probably 30 minutes to walk from one side to the other. And yeah, so if you're, if you want to see a talk over here and then later on you want to see a poster over here, it just might not be enough time. So, anyway, it was it was exhausting. It was uh, in a lot of ways exhilarating and enlightening. It's always good to talk science and meet like-minded folks and that sort of thing. So I I enjoyed it, but I was sure glad to come home. Uh, it's an annual meeting. I only go to it every three years or so. Usually when it's in D.C. because I can drive down, and I like driving because that means I can leave at a moment's notice. Um, because it gets to me, you know, it's it's not, uh, it's enjoyable for a time, and then it's just overwhelming, and then it becomes very, um, uh, well, it, it frays your nerves after a while. You just want to be home. You want to stop eating restaurant food. You want to stop talking to every person you see and being surrounded by crowds and things like that. It, it's nice to be home. Um... Uh, I've got my near up here with some haunted bookshop in it, which is not the main event. We'll get to that. Uh, this is more of a, a preparatory step and, and late, later palate cleanser, and I will explain. Uh, actually, let me explain now so I can get it lit up. So the, we've been doing the tobacco of the week, uh, random choice. You know, I pick three out of a box of tobaccos. I don't honestly know what's in there, and I'm going to keep doing this until it's empty. Uh, there are these little jars little samples that I've just accumulated over time and I would stuff them in this box and I forgot that I even had this box so I don't know what's in it and I haven't looked I just reach in I pull out three now I'm starting to know some of them because the two that we don't choose go back in but uh, there are surprises as you'll hear so this week I pulled out the three and, and the guys on the live stream vote and the winner was Galworth and Hogarth, Kendall, Kentucky. My, my. So, let me set aside this wonderful bowl of Hona Bookshop. And get out a pipe for this. I am not putting this in a good pipe. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say. This is actually a fine pipe, which is one I don't smoke much. It's a shop pipe. It's down here for when I need something that I don't mind dropping on the concrete floor and whatnot. Uh, it's a Medico. It's a VFG, which I believe is very fine grain. A very nice pipe, and it's got this, uh, I always forget what this is called, but it's like a rubberized, uh, it's not a vulcanite stem, but it's much softer than an acrylic stem. Uh, you can chew on it, it's nice. So, I should have done more research on this, and I didn't. Uh, I feel bad about that, but it's a tobacco. <laughs> It's a Lakeland. It smells non-offensive. 
but it's it's it, it's lying to you. Um, it's got a sweet semi Virginia, you know, hay-like kind of sweetness. Um, there's a little bit of a like. Mm, there's there's a sweet scent that's not supposed to be there. I I hesitate to say floral because I know that evokes some pretty strong uh, emotional responses, <laughs> at least for me. Um, it's a beautifully cut tobacco. It's it's a very fine dark shag cut. Hope that's coming through. And you know, one thing I can say about this is the tobacco quality is really quite good. I'm guessing this is primarily Virginia uh, with some. Uh, Kentucky dark, not dark fired Kentucky, but Kentucky Burley. Uh, but I don't honestly know. I, I should, I'm sorry, I should have done my research on this and I didn't. So I'm loading this into the, to the Medco. And since it is a fine shag cut, I want to pack it tightly, which I am doing. Now this is, um, so I've had exactly two bowls of this. One was during the live stream. And the other was yesterday. And the way the, the tobacco of the week works is I, I smoke it during the week. Um, and I, I do a little impression video for you on, on Sunday after the, uh, the Friday. And may, maybe I should start doing that so that I would actually review this next week. That, that would probably make more sense because then I could have a whole week to... Let me re rethink the whole tobacco of the week. But... For now, it's it's the Sunday after we choose it, and I've only had the the two bowls because honestly, I don't like this very much. Now I know it's got its fans. I know there are Lakeland fans out there. Obviously, they've been making Lakeland tobaccos for a very long time over there in the Lakeland district, across the whole pond. And uh, you know, if you like this stuff, God bless you. It's uh, that's great. I. You know, the beautiful thing about pipe smoking is that it's it's what you like, you know, and, and, and we don't agree on anything in a sense, and that, that's beautiful. So, uh, yeah, it's got it's got stuff in it. <laughs> it's not just tobacco. So let me get it lit. I'll talk more about it. On the initial light, ah, it's hard to describe. It's definitely sweet, but there is some something that's not supposed to be there. Something that tastes perfumey. And uh, soapy. I mean, I know a lot of guys say soapy, and that's kind of become a cliche, but I have to say it's accurate. This is somewhere between smoking something like, like, um, uh, I'm blanking on the, the tobacco I want to cite here. Hmm. GLP's Union Square. Oh, wait. It's somewhere, it's like a combination of GLP's Union Square and a bar of Irish Spring Soap. Maybe not Irish Spring, maybe something more uh, ladylike, if you will. And for the love of God, don't retrohale it. I learned that the hard way on Friday night, and I tried it again yesterday, and I may try it again today just for your entertainment, but it's very, it's astringent. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it. It, it really burns my nasal passages and, and leaves this very uh, 
aftershavey type sensation. I, I don't know how else to explain it. There's there's the the the, the odor of the various uh, toppings that they're using, plus this astringency, and it just reminds me of like having like perfume or aftershave uh, sprayed in your face when you're walking through a store or something like that. It burns well, uh, given that shag cut, although I've not managed to really get it lit well for some reason. We'll give it another shot here after I tamp it. And, and the tobacco is really good. I mean, that's the unfortunate part about this for me, is that I, I think the underlying tobacco is, is actually a very good quality Shag cut tobacco, predominantly Virginia, and I'm guessing from the Kentucky name, it's going to, you know, I should look it up. I'm going to look it up because you deserve better than this. You also deserve better than watching a guy look something up, but hey. Uh, let's see. Kendall. And can he smell? Oh, there is actually a place called Kendall, Kentucky in Kentucky. How about that? Maybe that's where I can send this stuff. Okay, it's not letting me go to the link for some reason. There we go. Yes, I am older than 21. Oh, I would not have expected that. This has surprised me. I'm glad I looked it up because I was lying to you, I think. So this is what it says on the on tobacco reviews. This entry in the Galwith and Hogarth and Company Kendall line is 100% dark fired Kentucky leaf. I'm really surprised by that. I would not have guessed that this was dark fired Kentucky. Exceptionally full and well-rounded, Kendall, Kentucky is a full-bodied, full-strength tobacco, 100% African-grown variation of the actual Kentucky seed. These tobaccos are fire-cured, which gives them a distinctive aroma and flavor. This is a fairly strong but exceptionally cool tobacco for the lovers of dark-fired Virginias. Uh, it doesn't say anything about a topping. Am I crazy? I got the right name here. Hmm. This is interesting. You know, now that I'm reading this, I'm definitely tasting the Kentucky. The dark fired. Yeah. I'm sorry, this has got stuff on it. There's no way that this doesn't have um, some of those Lakeland toppings on it. But it makes a little more sense to me now because I don't like dark fired. Uh, I like a little bit of it. But I don't like it when it's overdone, and yeah. So maybe some of that odd flavor that I was getting was actually from the dark fired. But this is perfumey and such, so I don't know. I, I understand that uh, at these company, yeah, Galwith and Hogarth, um, they they never clean the machines. Apparently, it's a point of pride for them, and so if they're pouring, you know, geranium and rose water and everything else onto tobacco number one and tobacco number two doesn't get any topping, it gets topped because it's it's there. Uh, hmm. I should have read the review before I did this because now I feel a little silly, but you got an honest impression. This is, yeah. 
So I now have two reasons to not like this tobacco. Number one, it's a Lakeland, and number two, it's a Dark Fire Kentucky. 100% Dark Fire Kentucky. Hmm. But there is good quality tobacco in there, and, and even though it's Dark Fire Kentucky, I'm, I'm enjoying aspects of the tobacco. So that's a, that's a good thing. Again, if you like this, you know, if this is your thing, then that's fantastic. Um, it's just not my thing. But it is the tobacco of the week, so I will soldier on. And at the end of the week, I have to decide what to do with this. It's not something I could even blend with other things because it's so... It's one of these things that no matter what I put it in, it's going to taste like this. Did I mention I don't like it? Okay, let's let's move on to other things. It was raining yesterday, and uh, I was going to do leaf management, but it was raining, so instead I came down here and I played on the lathe for a little bit, uh, not doing anything serious. I should have been doing something serious because I got a ton of stuff to do down here, but instead I played on the lathe and I made uh, some tampers. And I make these, I call them shop tampers. You've seen them. I, I don't, they're nothing special, but they're a way for me to use up bits of wood that I would have to throw away otherwise. And uh, they give me some practice at, at uh, spindle turning, and I need practice at spindle turning. Uh, I need practice at all wood turning, to be honest. So this is the first one I made. This is over 10 years old, and it is disgusting because I've never cleaned it or anything, and it's been well used. It sits down here. It sometimes sits in the ashtray. It sometimes sits in, in a little tin can that I have here. You've seen it uh, many times, but this was the original. This is made of ash. I don't know if you can see that green. Uh, the lighting here isn't that great for it, and a lot of that green is just picked up uh, tobacco ash over time. Uh, it's obviously wood and it's got two ends. One is a bit larger, the other one's a bit smaller for the more narrow uh, or conical pipes. And then I have this little bead in the middle that I like because it gives my fingers something to, you know, my thumb goes underneath it, my index finger goes on top of it. It's just, it's just a nice way to locate it and well, it's I like the design it, and it's fun to make. So I use these, like I said, as, as sort of a turning exercise, and this guy is quite old, and that's what I was turning like 10 years ago. And one of the things I try to do is, you know, make them thin and, you know, get the curves right and get that bead looking the way I want it to look, and sometimes I make it more bulbous or asymmetrical, like an onion thing or something like that, just to, just to practice this, mostly the skew chisel and a little bit of spindle gout work. So I made two yesterday, and I wound up making them much thinner. Uh, I don't really, I don't like measure these out or anything, so I, I didn't have this in front of me, and this was the first one I made. And you can see comparatively, that is a bit thinner. Um, but then I made a second one. These are out of cherry, by the way. And I uh, wound up making that much, much thinner. So compared to its uh, great-great-grandfather. <laughs> this one, uh, my buddy Phil Rivera affectionately referred to as an arthritic chicken leg bone. I thought that was nice of him, an arthritic chicken leg bone. Uh, I don't know what you'd call that one, Phil, maybe a pigeon. Um, yeah, so anyway, I've been playing with that, and the reason I'm showing them to you is I'm just curious on this continuum, what, which thickness do you prefer? Let's see, uh, original, slightly thinner, and much thinner. I asked on Instagram, and, uh, sorry, there's an alarm going off there. I asked on Instagram, and the response was, I didn't get a lot of responses, but um, most of the people that responded seemed to prefer this one. Uh, the, the middle one. Although I didn't give them the choice of the original. Uh, 
I showed them to my wife and she hated this one, although she doesn't tamp pipes, so I don't know what she would know, but um, I think it's interesting that people don't seem to be liking this one because I like this a lot. It, it just, it's just comfortable. It's very light and easy to hold. and um, I don't. It's strong. You know, this is cherry is not going to snap on you unless you really try to break it. So, yeah, I'm just curious what, what your thoughts are. In a sense, I'm just glad that I can go that thin, because uh, that, that's a bit of a challenge. The wood starts to flex on the lathe, and yeah, it's fun to play with these things. Just build your skills. But I got other stuff to do. One of my plans, um, I don't know if I'm going to do it this week or once I go on vacation at the end of the year, but I've got to make drawers for that chest of drawers that I built. Uh, sitting in front of me, I'm looking at it right now, it doesn't have any drawers in it, it's useless. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on that. So the chest is all handmade. I, I hand cut the dovetails and the uh, the dados for the shelves and everything. I'm starting to think maybe I'm going to knock up the drawers using, some, uh, using the router and just do some tongue and groove routing just to get it done. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what my motivation level is like. I really need those drawers, though. I'm, I got to have some more storage down here for for stuff. So that's kind of my plan for vacation. So Thanksgiving. It is Thanksgiving, and uh, I, I titled this video "Thanksgiving Wishes." I didn't mean that I was going to make wishes. I meant that I wanted to wish you all the best for Thanksgiving and. You know, it's a bit cliche, but it, it is a time to reflect on what we've got, you know, what we can be thankful for. And I gotta say, I've got a lot to be thankful for. You know, it's, we're living in a time when, when it's very easy to be negative. It's very easy to look at the world and say, oh, everything's falling apart. There's wars, there's, there's, there's illnesses, there's, there's all sorts of things. And, and that's true. You know, that is true. You know, look at where we were just four years ago compared to today. And it's, it's a it's a black and white difference. But we're moving in a direction that I think is positive. We're, despite a lot of forces trying to push us in a negative direction. At a personal level, I'm, I'm good. I've got a job that I enjoy pays me well. I'm not wealthy by any stretch, but I get by. I've got a good retirement plan. Oddly, I'm, I'm at a stage where politics affects my retirement. You know, I, I hate to say that, but this upcoming presidential election is going to determine how many more years I have to work. <laughs> because it affects the stock market dramatically. Uh, so that'll be interesting. But yeah, I got a lot to be thankful for. And Chief among those things, I, I, I think, are I'm thankful that I've been able to spend time and and learn from and interact with so many good people um, in my life. You know, there's been there's been bad folks, but there's been an awful lot of good ones. And I was thinking about that at the at the meeting last week because you know there's so many people there that. I've known for a very long time that you know I've done work that has influenced my own work uh, that have shared things with me and I've and have you know, been able to benefit from things that I, I, I taught them but not just in the scientific world in the pipe world certainly uh, 
you know, you, you guys, this whole community is a blessing. But in life in general, you know, learning to be a man, learning to be a human being, and trying to do it well, and having the support of people that are not afraid to tell you you're stupid. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm thankful for this year. People that tell me I'm stupid. <laughs> but it's true. You want to be challenged. You want to be told when you're wrong. Um, and I've, I've been very fortunate, you know, going all the way back to my, my grandfather and my, my dad, who would say, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what, what are you, dumb? I can hear my grandfather saying, you're smarter than that, Mike. We do stupid things as kids, especially boys. Sometimes I think about some of the stuff I did and realize that it's just miraculous that I'm alive. But I wouldn't change it and I wouldn't try to protect. I don't have children. Um, just wasn't blessed with those. But if I had them, I wouldn't try to protect them from that sort of thing because it, it made me who I am. Well, maybe one or two of them <laughs> I might try to protect them from, but for the most part, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to change it. Ah, well, the one blessing in, in, in this, uh, oh, by the way, I'm not thankful for Kendall, Kentucky. The one blessing in this blend is that it burns fast uh, because of the shag cut. So I am nearly done. It's just awful stuff. But I made an agreement with folks on the live stream. I will smoke this every day this week. Not my favorite pipes. I've got four or five pipes I keep down here. And, and you know, I don't smoke them enough. I, I should. I started keeping them down here because I would forget to bring a pipe down and you know, be working and there it would be. Uh, and then it became more of something that I would, like on the weekends I smoke... Um, autumn evening sometimes and it doesn't really ghost but I don't really like mixing it with uh, things like haunted bookshops so it's just nicer to have pipes that I don't have to worry about that I can just step that in and enjoy it or for things like this oh one last thing before I, I tie this up I made my annual mistake I do this every year I got taken in I thought maybe this is going to be the Christmas aromatic I like. So I just this morning put in an order for something. I'm not going to tell you what it is and we'll talk about it when, uh, when we get closer to Christmas, but I, I got myself an aromatic holiday blend. So hopefully when that comes along, this is, we've hit the bottom of the bowl and it's getting very ashy. Yeah, that's it. We're done. Yay! <laughs> Palette cleanser. Uh oh, 8 o'clock coffee. Not strong enough. <laughs> we'll go right back to the haunted bookshop and hope we can burn this away. Yeah, so I got this aromatic blend coming in. We'll, we'll talk about that one when we get closer to Christmas. And uh, gosh, hopefully I won't be reaching for the Kendall Kentucky to try to get rid of the flavor of the holiday blend. That'd be bad. All right, folks, I got stuff to do. You got stuff to do. So thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Spend time with your family, your friends. Uh, Enjoy some good food. 
and uh, I'll, I'll see you. We'll, we'll be here on Friday, uh, Friday night live stream at 8 p.m. Uh, try to join us if you can. It's always a good time, and you can help pick the next tobacco of the week. Uh, and maybe you won't be as cruel as the guys who were there on Friday night, this past Friday. Um, and I'll be back next Sunday with, uh, with another one of these weekend chats that people enjoy for some reason. So take care. Have a great Sunday and fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.